greater. Nobody like our God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. We glorify your name.
We lift up your name in advance, oh God. Hallelujah. Before we even see it, Lord God, we lift you up and we praise you. We tell you thanks. In Jesus' holy blessed name we pray. Hallelujah. Glory be to your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. It is indeed a privilege to stand here and welcome you to Grant AME Church. Um, located at 2029 Gerard Street East, here in Toronto. We are indeed blessed to have you worshiping with us another Sunday. If this is your first time joining us, we want to say welcome, and we do hope that your souls will be blessed and you will join us again. If this is not your first time, it is indeed a blessing to be ministering to you on this great day. I want to share a few announcements with you. The work at the church still continues, and I keep repeating, the church is closed, the building is closed, but church goes on. God still deserves the glory and the honor and the praise. I invite you to visit our website. The information will be seen on the screen. Send us a message, a prior request. Let us lift you up in prayer. Let us lift up your request before God. You can visit our website. There is an area on there where you can send in your prior request and your information, and we will pray with you. If you are in need of assistance in terms of groceries or you know someone that is in need, we invite you to come to our food bank on Wednesdays 2 to 6 p.m. If you cannot come on Wednesdays and there are other days that are more relevant to you, are available to you, please call and leave a message and we will make arrangement with you to come and get something. We also invite you to worship with us on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. on Zoom. Information is also on the screen on our midweek services and prior session. God has been good to us and we continue to give God praise. We continue to meet as much as possible and pray for each other and to hear the word of the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. God has been good to us. Our Sunday school is held on Sundays at 2.30 p.m. on Zoom. The information is on the screen. Please join in if you have young ones or youth Sunday school. Please have them join in where they can have interactive sessions and learn at the same time and have fun. To God be the glory, great things he has done. If you would if you're interested to support the ministry here at Grant, you may give your tithes and your offerings or your donations. We have three methods that you can do so. We have e-transfer, the email to use it, given at grant at gmail.com. Also, you can visit our website and you can click on the donate button and follow the instructions are there. And also, you can mail in your envelopes to the address on the screen or on the website, 2029 Gerald Street East. We want to continue to share the word of God with you. We want your souls to be blessed. We want you to know that we are here to serve. We love you. We love the community in which we serve. And we do hope and trust that um, as you worship, your, the presence of the Lord will be wherever you're worshiping this morning. Amen and amen and amen. Amen. What an awesome day to be celebrating or remembering Pentecost Sunday, the church of God, in such a time as this. In such a time as this. Many of us in the week leading up to Today, we have been focusing on the Holy Spirit, its works, its fruits, its gift, its character, the significance of the Spirit in our lives, and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in us as believers. And so, I invite us to continue to lift up each other in prayer. I want to share a word that God has laid on my heart. And so, I invite you to turn your Bibles with me to the book of Acts. I read from verse 1 through to 13. Please follow. Book of Acts chapter 2, read from 1 to 13. It says, when the day of Pentecost came, 
They were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard them speaking in his own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in, in his own native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadis, Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Persia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in their own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they ask one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they have too, they have had too much wine. I want to share with you the topic, the value of an empty vessel. The value of an empty vessel. Bow your heads with me in prayer. Eternal righteous heavenly father, we come to you in this moment. Lord God, today we celebrate remembering that day of Pentecost, the experiences of the disciples as they waited and anticipated the gift of the Holy Spirit. And so Lord, even as we come at this moment, Lord, in the season of unprecedented times, a season, God, where we don't know what tomorrow holds, God, we can't even fathom what will happen, oh God, but we put our hope and trust in you. Lord, we ask that you will speak to our hearts at this time. We ask, God, that you will speak to every heart that is listening before you, every, 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 every visit the homes, mighty God, for each and every one of us, oh God, speak to every situation before you, every vessel that is presented before you this morning. God, your word is powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, oh God. And so, Lord, we ask, oh God, that as your words go forth, it will go forth with the power, with the anointing, and with the clarity. And, Lord, your people will receive your words. Lord, as I stand before you, oh God, I ask you, oh God, that you will cause me to decrease, and you will increase. Lord, speak. Speak in such a time as this. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart. Let it be acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name, amen. Pentecost for the church of God is significant because it reminds us or it causes us to look back on that great day when God equipped the believers with the power of his Holy Spirit so that he will be glorified among his people and the disciples will now go, go out and become witnesses. It was a union taking place between God and his people. Pentecost Day serves as a reminder that our Savior, Lord, our Creator, Sovereign God, still works miracles, still grant us the opportunity to enjoy the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And so we are reminded on a day like this that God granted his Holy Spirit to those of us uh, called to be the first fruit of his spiritual harvest uh, and empowering us with his anointing, with his power. God would have had us remain reminded from last week of the necessity and importance to be silent and to wait on him. 
for the leading of the Holy Spirit. Uh, last week we spoke about God reminding uh, the disciples, or rather telling the disciples to wait in Jerusalem for the Spirit. Uh, as many times we are guilty of using the pretense of being led by the Spirit uh, to demonstrate our hidden agenda and the hidden works of the flesh. Uh, this week I want to remind us and I want to share a word uh, from the topic, the value of an empty vessel. Focusing on self-emptiness for a spirit-filled life. The value of an empty vessel. Simply put, a vessel that is empty, the next action is to fill it. If you have an empty vessel, the next step is to fill it. And so God would have reminded us this morning that we also need to be filled. But there's value in emptying ourselves to be used by God. Setting self aside. If we are filled with self, then there's no room for the move of the Holy Spirit. A lot of times we get the terminology and the theology right when it comes to the spirit. Uh, but today I want to look at it uh, in terms of the value of the empty vessel. You see, the thing is that uh, self and spirit cannot exist in the same thing. We cannot serve God with self uh, at the same time wanting the Holy Spirit to have its way. We learn in the scripture that as Jesus ascended into heaven, Right before the very eyes of the believers, after instructing them to wait in Jerusalem for the gift of the Holy Spirit, uh, the Bible teaches us that the disciples made their way to Jerusalem. Uh, and they made their way to wait uh, on the gift of the Holy Spirit. Uh, the Bible said that as the disciples gathered in the room, uh, now that their Lord and Savior, their Master, had told them to wait, they were doing just that. Uh, the Bible tells us in Luke that not only did they wait, uh, but when they left the Mount of Olive, they went uh, praising God. They went uh, and they found themselves in the temple daily, giving praise and thanks to Almighty God. They were waiting. So that's where we left off last week. And so while they waited, they waited in prayer. They waited in communion with God. They waited uh, anticipating for the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Uh, but I want to shift it a little and look at it. The Bible said uh, that while the disciples were waiting, uh, Peter saw it necessary to take on himself uh, to tell the others that it was only right uh, that they look for someone to replace Judas Iscariot. So they choose to and they prayed and they cast lot. Many questions that many theologians and scholars ask. They ask a question. After receiving that instruction, why did they see necessary to take it on themselves to choose someone to replace Judas Iscariot? After they were waiting on the Spirit to teach them and guide them in all things. But as I look at it, I'm also reminded that it is just like us at times. We see waiting on God. And we, we stop waiting and we do our own thing. Paul's, uh, rather Peter's intention was good. But we are left with the question, did they follow the instruction of God. Did they get the authority or the instruction to appoint somebody? Because after Jesus told them, why didn't they wait? And so I raised that point because I want to remind somebody that even though you're waiting and you're asking questions and the wait may seem long, you're reminded that the instructions of God still stand. Wait on God. The Bible tells us, Church of God, that it was now 10 days uh, since the accession, accession of Jesus Christ. And the disciples were assembled together in the room. This seemed to be a daily occurrence. I can imagine the anticipation 
that they had. I can imagine uh, that they gathered daily. The Bible said in Luke that they went to the temple daily. Uh, and not only did they went to the temple daily, but I believe in my spirit uh, that they gathered in the upper room daily, uh, seeking God in prayer and worshiping uh, because they were waiting uh, on the Holy Spirit. Uh, I can describe it as an harmonious expectancy of something great to happen. Uh, I don't know about you, but if you are expecting something great to happen uh, and you have been waiting on the indwelling uh, the filling of the Holy Spirit you have been waiting on a move uh, from Almighty God uh, I want to encourage you to keep on waiting uh, because God is about to show up in your situation But let your waiting period be characterized with praise and joy and thanksgiving and prayer and supplication. Because that's what the disciples spend themselves doing. And here we have in Acts 2, the day had come. The value of an empty vessel. Why do I call it an empty vessel? The disciples were prepared for what was about to happen. They didn't just talk the talk. They walked the walk. They spent the days in the temple praising and making prayer, giving prayer and supplication to God. So they were prepared for what was about to happen. That's why I call it the value of an empty vessel, a vessel that is ready to be filled, to be used by Almighty God, to be poured into. The first point I want to raise a vessel that is empty is accessibility for cleansing and purification. Have you ever tried to clean a vessel that is already occupied? I dare you to try it. A vessel that is occupied cannot be clean unless you empty it. And so it is important uh, that the disciples were empty and ready to be filled, uh, to have the, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit into their lives. Uh, oh, God Almighty, as the disciples waited, uh, not only did they wait, but I believe that they went through a period of purification and cleansing. Uh, every day they met, they prayed. Uh, every day they met, they worshiped God. Uh, they offered praise and thanksgiving unto God. Uh, whatever aspect of your life that you're facing, whatever circumstances, uh, there is value in a vessel that is empty. Uh, because it's only when a vessel is empty uh, can true cleansing and purification take place. 2 Corinthians 7 verse 1 says, Let us purify or cleanse ourselves from everything that contaminates and defiles the body and the spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. An empty vessel, although it's empty, can also have remnants or residue from its previous content. And that is why it's important to cleanse the vessel. Emptiness does not equate cleansiness. If you have a glass and it's empty, it can also be dirty. That's why some people, when you give them something to drink out of a glass, they hold it up to see if there's anything that needs to be cleansed. And that's why God sometimes holds us up to the light. So that when you get into the light, all the, all the residue and the impurities are seen. Oh God Almighty, uh, I want to remind somebody this morning that there's value in a vessel that is empty. Uh, but there's more value in a vessel that is clean and pure before God. Uh, oh God Almighty, God wants to pour uh, his anointing on the people of God, uh, on the church of God. I'm not talking about uh, the anointing that you got when you accepted Christ as your personal savior. I'm talking about a fresh anointing each day uh, to walk holy, uh, to live with God, uh, to live in the fear and wisdom and knowledge of Almighty God. Let this season of Pentecost be a Pentecost season of purification and cleansing. A season when we prepare for being Christ's witness in all the world to all the people and all for his glory. I want to let us know that another value of an empty vessel is its availability to be filled. This is a part of Pentecost story that we like. 
This is a story that we talk about. The Bible said, Luke gave an account. In Luke's account in Acts, Luke said, they couldn't even describe the experience. He said there was suddenly a sound like a mighty wind, like a tempest. They couldn't even describe it. Then he said that there were, seems to be like fire, cloven tongues of fire. They couldn't even describe it. Uh, I want us to understand that when there's a pouring uh, of the Holy Spirit, there's things, uh, there are times when we can't even explain what is happening. Uh, but we know what we feel. We know what we're experiencing. Uh, we know what is happening on the inside. There was a sound from heaven. Like a violent wind. Imagine believers. You can't explain. You can't even understand. But there's a shift in that is taking place. Imagine seeing something that looks like fire. But it's not fire. That's what Luke described. It was distributed upon all the believers. That experience that the believers had changed their lives forever. We read in the rest of Acts where their relationship and their ministry was changed forever. This experience, the downpouring, the anointing, uh, change your lives forever. When you come uh, in contact with the anointing of Almighty God, uh, your life will never and can never be the same. The manifestation, the revelation of the Spirit of God, it can never be the same. It will never be the same. I can just imagine. That's all I can do. I can't imagine the preparation. I can't imagine the disciples. I can't imagine how the, the, the us, how awesome they felt. Not only that, but the Bible said that the devout Jews who had gathered for the Feast of the Weeks, when they heard the commotion, when they heard the noise, they came running because all the believers were speaking in tongues. Not only that, but here you see discernment of, of speaking in tongues because the Bible said that they understood what was being spoken. Oh, God Almighty, if only we understood understood the power of the anointing, the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, if only we understood uh, the move of the Holy Spirit. Uh, when God moved, things happen. Uh, I want us to understand uh, that there is deliverance in the anointing. Uh, there, is, there, there is righteousness in the anointing. Uh, if only we understood uh, what the Spirit of God can do in our lives. Believers, I don't know about you. But I need a downpouring of the anointing. I need a pouring of the anointing in my life. I need us to understand that it's the same spirit that lives in the disciples that also abides in us. So here I am saying to you, Jesus said to his disciples in John 14, he said, anyone who has faith in me, will do what I have been doing. He will do even greater things than these because I am going to my Father. He said the spirit of truth will be with you and live in you. Jesus said to them, I'm sending the comforter. Oftentimes I wonder why is it that we don't see miracles and signs and wonders following the church of God. Not even the church of God, the believers. Why is it? It's the same spirit that is yesterday, today, and forever will be God. Are we missing something? Are we living, but we are not following the leading of the spirit? Jesus said, it will teach you all things. 
remind you of everything. He said, my peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gave. I call us to reflect as believers on the work and the manifestation and the revelation of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Are we so earthly minded that we are no longer living a spiritual life, a spiritual beings before God? Oh God Almighty, the work of the Holy Spirit through us as God witness, witnesses is needed in the church of God. Our signs and wonders follow in your ministry as individuals. There is a missing piece somewhere. There is a missing piece. There is a missing piece. The final point I want to share. When a vessel is empty, you determine the contents and its purpose. God Almighty. The Bible tells us that the disciples were equipped to go forth and to minister. What a move of the Holy Spirit on that great day. Where there is an outpouring of the anointing, there is a move that is followed. A move in that the anointing breaks the yoke and destroys the yokes of sin and bondage. A move in that the anointing causes a shift. The thing about an empty vessel is that the one who pours in it determines the use of its content. You cannot pour out anything other than what is poured into you. Will you allow God to pour into you this morning? Will you allow God to pour into you this morning? I want to share with you as I close. The Bible tells us that after that experience, 3,000 believers were added to the church. But that's not the part that moves me. In verse 42 to 47 of Acts, the Bible said that the believers engage in several things. And I want us to look at it and see where we are as a church of God, as believers. He said, one, they devoted to teaching of the word of God through the spirit and fellowship. He said, two, the believers engage in breaking of bread and sharing and eating together. Three, they were devoted to prayer. Now, in my spirit, they were devoted individually and collectively. Four, he said, all the believers were together and they had all things in common. Think about that. All things in common. No biting, no, 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 no talking about each other, no malice, malice keeping, no hypocrisy. They had all things in. They were of one mind and one accord. They gave to the needy. Every day they met together, eating together with sincere hearts, uh, poor, proving God and praising God and enjoying favor with all people. What is the characteristics of our vessels this morning? What is the characteristics? There is a pouring that is about to take place or that is taking place in the church of God. But God can only pour in empty and clean vessels before him. I want to invite you to pray. As you bow your heads with me in prayer, right where you are, God, we honor you, we thank you, we magnify you, we lift you up, we crown you. We ask, God, that you pour your Holy Spirit upon the lives of your people. God, we ask that even as the vessels are before you right now, let there be a cleansing, a purification, so that you can fill them. Fill us, God, with your contents that you need in us, God, to fulfill your purpose. Lord, we thank you for your people. We thank you for your work. We thank you for the manifestation of your spirit. We thank you for the indwelling of your Holy Spirit. We give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen.
Thank you for joining us. Thank you for listening to us. We do pray that your soul has been blessed. Your heart has been uplifted. We continue to invite you to join us on Wednesdays where we continue to praise God and hear the word of the Lord and pray with you. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you now and forevermore. And the people of God say, Amen and Amen.